Hi guys, welcome back. Talking about trig this time. Getting triggy with it. Oh my god. Forget I said that. <laughs> um, okay. So when it comes to trig, uh, trigonometry is the study of triangles. Um, more specifically right triangles, but sometimes not. Um, but I want to say, so I really had to hunt. Like hunt, hunt, hunt. I went through like probably... 10 or more SAT practice tests out there, like old SAT tests. And I had to hunt for um, trig stuff that was not based on a right triangle. There's not, I, I want to say there was like none that is non-right triangle trig. All the trig that I did find is based on right triangles. And even that there was very, very little. Like you'll notice there are not many practice problems here. And that's because I really couldn't find any. Like I said, I looked at probably 10 or more SAT tests to try to find um, trig questions, Pythagorean uh, triple questions to pick for you. Um, that being said, let's do the ones I got and see how it goes. So the most basic thing that we can talk about when it comes to trig and right triangle trig is the Pythagorean theorem, which when you have that right triangle, uh, the Pythagorean theorem just allows us to find the third uh, side length of a right triangle as long as I know two. So like if I knew that this side here was six and this side here was 10, um, your Pythagorean theorem is always leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. Um, so in this case, I would have six squared plus I don't know squared equals 10 squared. So 36 plus x squared equals 100. Subtract the 36 or 64 and square root it so x is 8. Now the converse of the Pythagorean theorem is uh, is also true which says that um, basically if you are given three numbers you can see if they make a right triangle or not um, by putting them into the Pythagorean theorem and as long as this side does equal that side then they are a Pythagorean triple okay. So that means if three numbers make the equation true, they represent the size of a triangle, a right one. E. You can actually use the converse to figure out if it's obtuse or right or obtuse or acute as well. Like if the hypotenuse number is smaller than these, it's acute. If the hypotenuse number is bigger than those, it's obtuse. Because like acute is less than 90, so less. Hypotenuse is less. And obtuse is bigger than 90, so if the hypotenuse is bigger. Kind of fun fact. Anyways, three numbers that make the Pythagorean theorem true are called a Pythagorean triple. Um, it says here that the Pythagorean theorem is used on every SAT test. But a lot. And sometimes in sneaky, hidden ways. So it is important to know. Um, just because you can, like, use it in other ways than you would think. I mean, like, when we're squaring stuff, understanding perfect squares that, like, form a three, form a triple, are really good. Because this right here, I, I came up with this six and 10 real quick in my head because I know that six, eight, get, six, eight and 10 are a Pythagorean triple. So like if the two legs are six and eight, then the other one's 10. But if I know that a hypotenuse is 10 and one leg is eight, then the other one has to be six. Like those three numbers just are always a pair. Um, so we can show whether or not each of these sets down here is a Pythagorean triple um, by just putting them into that good old Pythagorean theorem. And it's really a question of if they're equal or not. So 9 and 16 is 25, and so is that. So it checks out. Um, I think it goes without saying, but maybe not. Like when you're checking this, the largest number has to be your potential hypotenuse number because um, the hypotenuse is the longest side. So here we got 49 and 64, which when we add them up, is going to be 113, which is not 81. So this is not a Pythagorean triple. Uh, 5 squared, 12 squared. Is that 13 squared? I don't know. We're about to find out. So 25 plus 144 is 169. And that is also ooh, <laughs> 13 squared, so 169. Ooh, if you know anything about me, you know that I do not like decimals. But um, kind of the funny thing is, I don't see those as decimals. I see 6, 8, and 10. And I already told you that 6, 8, and 10 was a Pythagorean triple. So, like, I already know this is, but 
Um, we could do 6 squared plus 0.8 squared. Does it equal 1 squared? Well, 6 squared or 0.6 squared is going to be 0.36. 0.8 squared is going to be 0.64, and when I add those up, that's 1, and 1 squared is 1. That's actually a really good thing, because this big note about Pythagorean triples is a thing. Um, okay, anyways, let's try this one. So, 8 squared plus 15 squared, is that 17 squared? I don't know. 64 plus 225, let's see, 9, 8, 2. Hey, that's 17 squared. Um, also, I'm not using a calculator while doing this. Like, I do have a lot of perfect squares just, like, in my noggin, and that's a good thing to have, too. 17 is pretty high, but 17 shows up a lot, and it's one of these Pythagorean triple numbers, so knowing that 17 squared is 289 is a good one to know. Um, but, like, anything higher than that, probably not. Maybe I know 25 squared because 625 is used a lot, but... And, like, anything that ends in zero... Oh my gosh, I'm saying a lot of things. Like 40 is just going to be 1,600 because it's like the 4 and the 100 and then you put them together. Is that weird? I don't know. Anyways, 20 squared. I say that because now we have this crazy thing and I'm not going to know some of these. <laughs> like, I, 20 squared I know because I just do the 4 and the 10 uh, or the 2 and the 10. So 4 and 100. So 400. But the 21 is like less easy for me. So I'm about to bust that old calculator out after I just... So 21 squared is 21 times 21. That's 441. Um, when I add those up, that's 841. And I do not know 29 squared. I was pretty sure that 21 squared was 441, but I didn't want to be wrong. Um, but 29 squared, I sure do not know. So 29 times 21. <gasps> Pythagorean triple. I kind of knew those were a Pythagorean triple. I was a little unsure. Um, but again, that's where it's like, the more you know, the more you have it memorized, the, le the less time you have to spend going to your calculator, and any time saved is good. So this big note about Pythagorean triples, once you have some, so like the 3, the 4, the 5 was a pair, um, the 5, the 12, the 13 was a pair. Um, oh, most of these were. They all were except for that one. Um, but any multiple... of the triples are also a pair. So what I mean by that, and I guess multiple is maybe the wrong word to use, but like you can scale them up and scale them down all by the same thing. So like I was doing here. So I know that six, eight, and 10 are a Pythagorean triple. If you divide each of those by 10, then you get the 0.6, 0.8, and 1. So that's also a Pythagorean triple because I scaled them all down by 10. So like, for instance, if I took this 3, 4, 5 and scaled it all up by 2, um, 6, 8, ah, 6, 8, 10. Oh, oh that's why. Oh, my God, I'm down. Sorry. Um, or I could scale them all up by um, 9. That's fun. So 27. 36 and 45 is a Pythagorean triple that I really wouldn't have to find out or really wouldn't want to have to find on my own because they are such big numbers. But because they're all just multiples of that 3, 4, 5, I know that they are because 3, 4, 5 is a Pythagorean triple. So yeah, you can scale them up, scale them down. That's super fun. That's my spiel about Pythagoras. He's so great, although he's kind of not. He stole a lot of his theorems from his students. It would be like me stealing from you guys. It's terrible. You shouldn't do it. Anyways, sine, cosine, and tangent, the real tricky factors, okay, the real tricky stuff. Um, oh, my gosh, if I could just show all you little babies how trig comes about, it's so interesting. I actually hated trig so much when I was in high school, but once I understood what it was, I was like, dang, that's cool. Because it's really just about similarity, like I was just talking about with the Pythagorean triples um, and writing ratios of sides. So... Let's talk about it. Sine, cosine, and tangent are three basic trig functions. There are other trig functions. They're reciprocal functions, but they're in the SAT much less, if at all. Um, uh, this says trig ratios. That's also correct. Function, ratio. They are on every SAT test. Again, maybe there's one question, but I found a couple of SAT tests with none on there. So you might get lucky, but it's still important to know them. 
because there's at least one or two. So trig ratios are defined in right triangles, mostly. You can use them for non-right triangles, but I said those are few, 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 and far between on the SAT. Um, often they will use this cute little circle with a line through it. That's theta. It's just a Greek letter that we use to represent an unknown angle um, or an angle that we're trying to figure out. So when we're trying to find the sine of an angle, that means we are doing sine of that angle. So sine of theta, we shorten it a little bit. And the sine of theta is just equal to the opposite over hypotenuse. Um, cosine over theta. Again, if I'm looking at that angle, uh, we're trying to find the ratio adjacent over hypotenuse. So I should say these are the sides, like hypotenuse is my longest side. Opposite is opposite of me, across from me, not touching me. Adjacent is right on me, like right next to me, but not the hypotenuse, so the other one. And then tangent is a little weirder, but tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent. And I write them with one letter each just so you guys can see where the heck this acronym comes from. Um, I think some of you guys learned about like Ollie and a hippo. I don't, I don't remember. I don't know Ollie, but I've always remembered Sokotoa. Um, Sokotoa, Sokotoa, Sokotoa. Sine, opposite hypotenuse. Cosine, adjacent hypotenuse. Tangent, opposite adjacent. So it tells you the trig letter and the two sides that go with it in order of their fraction. But if you have an Ollie thing, do your Ollie thing. I don't know what it is. I'm so sorry. There's a really good YouTube video that will get Sokotoa stuck in your head. I can post it if you want. It's real fun. Maybe I'm going to post it. Determine the sine, cosine, and tangent of each of the acute angles in the given triangle. I should say, generally, we only want to write the sine, cosine, and tangent of non-90 degree angles um, or acute angles, angles less than 90. You can do it for others, but generally for this purpose, we're just going to do it for the non-90s. Non so if I was to do the sine of angle A, now I'm switching it up, not calling it theta, we would do the opposite of A over the hypotenuse. And it's always appropriate to reduce, so really... 2 over 5, 3 goes in above. Um, cosine of A, still looking at A. Adjacent to that is 9. Hypotenuse is 15. Again, always appropriate to reduce. So 3 fifths, 3 goes in above. And then tangent of A, again, still looking at A. You always got to start your angle. That tells you how to look at things. Um, uh, tangent of A is going to be opposite over adjacent. So opposite of A is 6. Adjacent to A is 9. Also 15, but he's a hypotenuse. We don't want him. We want 9. And it's always appropriate to reduce. So 2 thirds. Oh my god, they're kind of here. That's a thing. <laughs> now, we can also, so this is the sine, cosine, and tangent of angle A. And it's important to start at A because that tells me how to look. Because when I'm looking at angle B, so if I want to do sine of B, now I'm down here. And I'm looking a different way because sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite of B, that's 9. Hypotenuse is still 15. So 3 over 5. Cosine of B, so still looking at B. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So 6 over 15, which is 2 fifths. And then tangent of B. Um, still looking at B, tangent is opposite, so 9 over adjacent, so 6, so 3 over 2. So I don't know if you noticed as I was going through these, the sine and the cosines just swap each other when you're looking at different angles because, you know, if I look at the opposite here, it's not going to be the opposite down there. Get my meaning? So your sine and your cosines are just um, swapped, and the tangent is the reciprocal, so that's kind of fun fact. Now, they might give you something here like B where you don't have that third side, but you can find it because it's a right triangle and you can do the Pythagorean theorem. Or if you have those Pythagorean triples tucked away in your brain, 12, 13, and 5, this would have to be 5. Okay? So I'm not going to do it of both this time. I'm just going to do, I don't know, A. So sine of A is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine of A 
is adjacent over at hypotenuse. And then tangent of A is opposite over adjacent. Cute, cute. So, oh my god, this question is so fun. Given that triangle ABC has a right angle at C and tangent of B is 4 over 3, find sine of B and cosine of B. It kind of feels like I don't have enough information, but you really do. So, if we're looking at triangle ABC and this is C, so like whatever, A is here, B is there. If I know that B has a tangent of 4 over 3, I know that tangent's ratio is the opposite side over the adjacent side. So that means opposite of B is a side length of 4. And adjacent to B and not the hypotenuse is 3. Feels like I still don't have enough? You got Pythagorean theorem that you can always use. And if you know those triples, you know that 3, 4, and 5 are a pair. So now I know the hypotenuse, which is what I needed to be able to find sine of B and cosine of B. So sine of B is opposite of B, which is 4, over the hypotenuse, which I found is 5. Oh my god, I love this problem. And then cosine of B is adjacent to B over hypotenuse, and there you go. <laughs> oh my god, I missed this. Now the thing is, if you um, are maybe asked to find uh, trig values, some of them are really nice trig values, but some of them are not so nice. So for the most part, um, trig values are not so nice. So using our calculator, we're going to have to evaluate some of these values. And guys, you do have it on an iPhone. I mean, you're hopefully going to have a TI-84 for this, but I do not have one with me right now. Um, but my iPhone will do it as long as I turn this guy sideways, which he doesn't want to do right now. It's because I'm not unlocked. There we go. Okay. Come on. There we go. Okay. So, sorry about the glare, but on your iPhone, and guys, Androids will do this too, and if you need to know how to do it on your Android, please let me know. I can let you know how to do it. Evaluate the following trig function. So, if I want to know the cosine of 40, um, I actually need to type that in backwards. So, I do 40, and then hit the cosine button, and it'll tell me. For the most part, they are going to be really gross decimals, so I'm just going to kind of put 0.766 here. Um, if you are trying this with me and you don't get that, what might be happening is that this button down here uh, doesn't say rad. It says deg, and you don't want that because um, if you have that up there, it's going to put it in radians. I'm pretty sure. Let me double check now that I'm saying this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't want that. So if you get that negative number, you want to click this button down here and put it in degrees because we're typing degrees in, not radians. That's a different thing. Okay, next. We want to do 20 cosine 0 0.9396. I don't know. I hate not rounding. Okay, then there we go. Okay. <laughs> um, 60 cosine. Hmm, that's one of those nice ones. 0.5. And then cosine of threes will do three. Cosine 0.99. Okay. Now let's do these sine. So 50 sine. Oh. Oop, shoot. I'm looking right at it, writing it wrong. 70 sine. Hmm. Looking for a little pattern. I'm always looking for patterns. Math is all about patterns. 30 sine. Oh, that's another one of those nice ones. Hmm. 87 sine. Okay, so I don't know if y'all are noticing or not, but these answers are the same. These are all cosines. Those are all sines. And so the interesting thing here to notice is that those two add up to 90. These two add up to 90. Those two add up to 90 and add up to 90. So they will be the same number if you have cosine and sine. And then the numbers inside the degrees add up to equal 90. So 
the sine of 15 degrees would be the same as the cosine of something that adds up with 15 and is 90. So 5 more will get me to 20, and then 75 will get me 90. <laughs> Subtraction, sorry. Um, down here, if I have the cosine of 72, that would be the same as, um, oops, I went the wrong way. That one's 89, that's easy. Is it up to 90? Uh, 8 will get me to 80, so 18. And then 45 and 45 will get me 90. So sometimes, and I noticed this as I was going through like a lot of SAT tests, sometimes I'll write it this way too, you guys, that like the sine of x is going to be the same as the cosine of 90 minus x. And I hope that kind of makes sense to you because that's what I'm doing in my head. I'm just doing it quickly. Whatever this is, I want it to add up with that to be 90. So really I have to subtract that from 90 to get it. And you could write it the other way as well. Like if I have cosine of x, then that's going to be the sine of 90 minus x. And I bring that up because I think that's in a couple of the problems that I have for you later. Um, which actually I think this might be time for practice problems and I might have to pause. Yes, I am going to make a separate video because I'm going to get interrupted by a bell again. So we will do some of these in the next one.